Now, what do you think about this dog, the b- bounty hunter? Have you been following that at all, Norm? Uh, that that guy. I mean, that's to me that sounds racist. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but like you gotta you gotta uh, remember that uh, even though that is a racist comment, listen, man, we've all known bounty hunters <laughs> in our time, you know, and they have that they have that thing like curse like a sailor. Well, that could go for bounty hunters just as well. They just chose sailor. Those guys. <laughs> I mean, they're not like you or me, you know. No, they're bounty hunters. <laughs> if you choose that as your career, you know, you're a bounty hunter. <laughs> Listen, you're some salty language is not going to be a. <laughs> <laughs> you may as well just be a longshoreman. No, <laughs> there's nothing worse than bounty hunting. No, you're a genius. <laughs> All right, we got a couple of minutes left. Anything else you want to lay on the listeners before we leave today? Uh, that was funny, that bounty hunting thing. <laughs> <laughs> like he's going to get a pass on it, right? I don't think so, Norm. I think he's in trouble. Is, are his bounty hunting days over? <laughs> <laughs> Where does like, he go we from there? We can't keep you on. I'm sorry, but, you know, you have to... <laughs> You know, you have a, a, a public image of, of hunting down criminals in their hotel rooms, <laughs> diving at them in the middle of the night and beating them up. We can't have you saying racist things. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the New York governor, Governor Spitzer, <laughs> I'm trying to get to learn things. But he uh, he doesn't want to issue uh, licenses to uh, illegal immigrants, you know. And uh, I don't know how the hell you're going to get a cab in New York City anymore. I mean, it's hard enough, you know, for me especially as a black man. <laughs> oh man, Dennis, this morning I had I, I had a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got a trainer. Right. I decided to work out. Hey, by the way, I I, I heard your uh, news uh, thing right before. You know? Yes. And they were talking mm-hmm. about that telecommunications thing. Yeah. And that uh, you know, because people are all freaked out that their their phones are being tapped all the time. You know. Right. People are so self involved that they think anybody cares about them. Right. But uh, you know, nobody wants their phone tapped. But I, I, I do I do a little trick, you know, during my <laughs> conversations with my friends. I'll be talking because you know sometimes I might say something that I might not, I might not want you know around or something. So I'll I'll throw this in during the conversation. I'll say to my friend, I'll say, Hey, Bill, you know who's one hot piece of ass? Dick Cheney. <laughs> 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 but anyways, I went to my trainer. <laughs> oh, God. I don't work out. I'm a weak man. You know that, Dennis. Well, listen, you and I were on the Mount Olympus of weakness, <laughs> and not just physically. <laughs> oh, no, in every way. In every single way. So um, I told the guy that, and he said he couldn't do anything except for the physical part. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if he was the best trainer anyway. He was smoking a butt the whole time. No, that's no, not good. That's just a joke. He was a big guy. and uh, But I, to- I told him, I said, look, I don't want to uh, be big like you. You know, I don't want veins. Mm-hmm. I have no use for that in my arms, you know, mm-hmm. or uh, abs. I don't want abs. I don't know quite what they are. <laughs> All I know is they were invented around the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know what you do when you when you get them, you know what I mean? Because you got to wear a shirt, you know? <laughs> you just go to work and go, hey, you want to see these things on my belly? <laughs> and I'm <just> like, no. <laughs> but uh, so I told the guy, I said, that uh, all I'm here, I'm here for one reason and one reason only. I want to have one hot ass. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, folks. We've got Norm. Norm, next time you call in from another island, maybe you can use a cheerleader megaphone so I can get a worse connection. Yeah, I can hear you now. What are you oh, doing? Excellent. Beautiful. Oh, What's excellent. happening? Listen, I was listening to that last lady. Yeah. And I only got one thing to say about that. 
There's Indians, and then there's engines. <laughs> <laughs> and we're <laughs> underway. Look, no, no Indian ever scalped me, you know, but, it, you know, you can't trust them engines. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Norby. And we're off and running. Yes, I, got, I got a list of things that I'm thankful for. Every year I make them on the day before Thanksgiving. Right. So I can make a little speech, you know. Right. And uh, I like I like if if, uh, if you'll have me to to read my list. Yeah, I'm going to not even interrupt you. You take your time. Well, firstly, I'm thankful for the fine ladies who live across this country and leave pies on their windowsills, so an old chunk of coal like me might have a meal from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for for all of my five children. Especially the one that I like. <laughs> I'm thankful for the simple things in life, man, like, like bread. Although I've never tried it myself, I, I hear it's quite good. <laughs> I'm very thankful for the, for the brave man who pulled me from a burning building last April and unfortunately perished in the process. <laughs> I'll never forget him, you know. I don't remember his name, but I think he had a mustache. <laughs> oh, Jesus, no. Of course, I'm thankful for being able to, to do stand-up comedy for a living, you know? <laughs> There's nothing more gratifying than to, to step on a stage before a, a quiet crowd and with my comedy, slowly turn them into an unruly mob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for women, the greatest creatures on earth. Because without women, Dennis, there would be no cookies. <laughs> I'm glad that this year the police finally solved the baffling murder of Margot Hemingway. <laughs> and finally, what I'm most thankful for, of course, is uh, serious you know, is friends. Yes, friends. Especially that one where Joey buys Chandler a duck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I like the best. <laughs> what, what are your Christmas plans, my friend? You want to talk holidays? My Christmas plans? Yeah. Well, I'm scrambling to get uh, presents for everybody. Mm -hmm. I got a... Uh, I got nothing. No, I got. Uh, let me think for a second. Oh, I got my I got my Mexican gardener. I didn't know what to get him, so uh, I think I'm going to let him steal my identity. <laughs> <laughs> Norm, that's the single funniest thing you've ever said on the show. I'm going to vote for Rudy Giuliani because yeah. uh, even though I'm uh, I'm kind. The only real issue I, I, I used to care about was uh, abortion. Right. Now I, I really, uh, you know, I, I want the toughest guy. Mm -hmm. And he seems like a, he seems like a tough, rough and tumble character. Right. Well, I like him. What but, side of the th what side of the abortion thing did you come down on? Are you pro-choice or pro-life? Me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. It's 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 uh, kind of unpopular. <laughs> I don't like saying it because it's unpopular. All right, I'll keep you off them. No, I, I, I'm pro. I'm pro, I'm very pro life, but uh, I, I just don't think a woman should have the right to choose to uh, murder a baby. <laughs> what are you still uh, toying with the idea of the puppet act, or where are you telling me? Oh no, no, I. Uh, what you want to hear that guy? I, I just remember you telling me you were working on a ventriloquist act. Yeah, we don't call it puppet act, but thanks a lot, man, for the respect. <laughs> 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 Can't do it now at all because the guy. That's a regular Johnny Carson move. Our next act is a puppet act. <laughs> we'll be coming out here with a puppet and pretending it speaks. <laughs> <laughs> Plus That's thing. That's what it looks like. Uh huh. But uh, no, Rusty's wood, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Saber Hagen, you have to isolate that quote. That That is going to be played regularly on this show. <laughs> Rusty's wood, my guy. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, man. Oh, tell me about Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, what? Another guy canceled? I don't know. <laughs> What's Rusty look like? What, Rusty? I know. I'll get him out of the bag in a minute. But listen, man. Is <laughs> what? He's shy sometimes. <laughs> but what, what is that? Uh, what, what that guy canceled, man? I was talking to Christian, and he's like, Another guy canceled. Who canceled? Bill Simmons has strep throat. He was going to talk about NBA, but uh, he can't talk. So I was like, well, it doesn't really work for the radio, Bill. We'll have to reschedule. No, Wait, I didn't Christian? know any of this. I just thought Norm was getting to us on Norm time because I thought uh, we were supposed to talk yesterday. But, uh, no, no, no. He talked. Well, listen, Norman. I can't tell you how good it is to hear from you. You know I think you're a genius. Wait, you know I love you. Wait, is it over? Well, we got to. I'm coming. I haven't played a commercial yet this hour. And, and no, but are we go, are we going to do another bit after the commercial? Can you stay? Hold on, man. Let me ask Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> One's uh, Rusty. He's my, as it says in the book, he's my uh, main man, <laughs> and he's just like an everyman. You know, he, this guy will say anything. And then there's uh, one puppet that's no good at all. That's uh, he's just. He's an old guy, and he's uh, cranky about everything, right? Yeah, but also, he doesn't believe the Holocaust has <laughs> He's like the worst puppet character ever. Like, you know, and everyone, I never want to talk to him. I never use him, because it always comes back to that. <laughs> and then the Stephen other guy Vermont. Is, the puppet isn't Stephen <laughs> Vermont. <laughs> no, he's the worst, man. The guy's like, the guy's just, first of all, he's playing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's not like an evil guy, just ignorant. <laughs> Norm, the last time I talked to you, you were working with a puppet. Does that still hold true? <laughs> Why? They're not called puppets, man. Oh, I'm sorry. What are they? Ventriloquist uh, dummies. <laughs> <laughs> and even that is a little uh, epithetic. But uh... what, 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 what would you... What would you imagine they'd like to be called in a perfect Well, world? I call them my friends. Yeah, of course. <laughs> my friends in the bag. <laughs> Remember I was telling you about how I met Andy Griffith? Yes. So he's reading this big book, you know. Oh, right. So That's it. I say, I'll sidle up beside him mm -hmm. and pretend to read a big book myself, mm -hmm. you know, and then we'll get in a discussion, right? Because right. I didn't want to just bug him, you know. That's how you meet people. And I was hoping maybe he'd, uh, by some crazy chance, maybe recognize me or something. Mm -hmm. So I stand beside him, and he's reading and everything like that, and I'm, so I'm talking to him and everything. Uh, anyways, turns out the guy's not Andy Griffith. <laughs> just an old man. So now I'm just talking to an old man <laughs> who clearly uh, is always, like, uh, mistaken for Andy Griffith, <laughs> but uses it, you know? Because I'm like, two minutes, three minutes, and who would talk, who would talk to an 85-year-old man? <laughs> So this guy's just milking it, you know. <laughs> oh, Norman, I love you. I'll talk at you down the road. The Dennis Miller Show. We are joined now by comedian slash ventriloquist. And I still see he's acting, as I see a listing here on the sheet, that he will be appearing in Adam Sandler's new movie, Funny People, currently in production. That sounds like a fun shoot. I wish I was on that one. Norm McDonald, welcome to the show, Norm. Hey, Dennis. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Norman. Where are you guys shooting funny people at, and are you having fun with it? Oh, yeah, man. We're having a riot. I play a stand-up comedian. Wow, you're kidding me. What's the What's the movie about? Stand-ups in yeah, general? Yeah, about stand-ups and how they're actually sad or some, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Every year, I go down to the Laugh Factory. Uh, the great Jamie Masada has a, a Christmas thing where he opens the doors of the Laugh Factory to, to the homeless, you know. So mm -hmm. I go out there with Freddie Stoller, and we, we ladle out some, you know, gravy and turkey and uh have you holiday. ever had a have you ever had a homeless guy in the middle of his set and you've come in and bumped him because you were on network <laughs> no, 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 they don't do sets oh. <laughs> no it's a they we give food to the home actually john lovitz is going to be doing a set this year so it's not entirely free <laughs> but <laughs> everything has its price Guys out there, homeless people doing the 20-second injury timeout gesture. Hey, enough, liar. I'm trying to have some giblets over here, okay? Can you lighten up? Jamie wanted to tell me also that this, this year uh, sex offenders are uh, 
Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you like to do during the days in San Fran to unwind? Do you go? I just work on my ventriloquism. Oh, that, how's that going, Norm? It's going great, man. I, I thought Rusty and I'd do a little holiday song for you. Oh, you're kidding me. Let me kick back here and put my feet up in front of the fire, you and Rusty. Which puppet is Rusty? Refresh me. Rusty's just my friend. You know, I, I'm having a lot of trouble with my uh, cranky old man. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember old Alec Majerison, the virulent anti-Semite. Yeah, sure, I remember. What are you kidding me? I have a I have a plaque commemorating my first meeting. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get rid of that guy because you know you know he's a Holocaust denier. That's no secret. <laughs> he's an enthusiastic Holocaust denier, <laughs> and I've had it up to here with this character. You know, the man <laughs> he's just a waste of wood. But I don't know what to do. One of my Jewish friends suggested that, uh, you know, why don't I just throw them in a fire and burn them? But I say two wrongs don't make a right. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta go. (laughs) But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. Uh, Let me get Rusty out here. Rusty. Uh Rusty, say hello to Dennis. Mm. Hey, Dennis. How are you? Hey, Rusty. (laughs) What? Hi, Rusty. Oh, hey, who's the dummy here, me or you? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it sounds like it's you. I'm sorry, Rusty. Let me give you my man voice. Hey, Rusty, how are you doing? Yeah, dummy. Hey, come on now, <laughs> Rusty. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Calling Dennis Miller a dummy on his own uh-huh. radio program. Now, what, can I jump in here for a second and tell you, here's how crazy Norm is. I'm sitting here believing that he actually has a puppet. Like, it, it's not enough for him to fake the puppet act on the radio and over the phone. He's actually, you did pull out a puppet and have it on your arm right now, don't you? Of course I have a my pal Rusty here. <laughs> yeah. What do you boys have planned for us today, Rusty Norm? We're going to do a song according to this dummy. Would you stop calling me that? You're the dummy. You're the dummy. Now listen. We're going to do a song, a beautiful song. Why? By the way, Rusty, what are you doing for Christmas? Are you going to see your family? Oh, sure. In my family tree, it's an actual tree. Okay, now that's just ridiculous. <laughs> you're actually overlapping dialogue here, Norm. You're not even putting a second between you and the puppet's voice. Now, R- Rusty, are you ready to sing that song with me? Sure. There you go. Okay, I'll start. Here we go. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you would say that he was a drunk. <laughs> hey, come on! Well, that's ridiculous. What the? Come on, now, this don't ruin This is a classic. I'm sorry. All right, now let's continue. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to town. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, have you been drinking some bathtub gin? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, now that's enough. That's way beyond the pale. Stop it, Rusty. Stop. I wish you'd kick the bucket. <laughs> like it, what? Rusty. Kick the bucket. What are you talking about? You said pale. <laughs> <laughs> bucket. It's a synonym. Okay, I, 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 yeah, that's right. Okay, now that's ridiculous. You're the dummy. Okay. I'm sorry, Dennis. This is going nowhere. This is ridiculous. I apologize for wrestling. (laughs) Jesus, it's so crazy. It's gotten so crazy over the years. (laughs) I can't go on with this. This is... This is just an abuse to the whole idea. All right. Christmas. Now, what what separates Rusty's old man voice from the old Holocaust denier's voice? What, give oh, me give me that voice. You don't want to hear from him, do you? Well, I know Rusty's just wetted the palate for Alex, a little more puppetry. I swore I'd never use this guy. <laughs> it's like the Stones doing Sympathy for the Devil after Altamont. Yeah, there I we never go. Alec, see you play that. Alec, how are you? Mm-hmm. I'm okay, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. What do you What do you think of this Christmas? What do I think of it? I'm not going to celebrate no holiday where a bunch of bearded New Yorkers killed our savior. Hey, hey, come on now. <laughs> 
You're going back in the case. I'm sorry, Dennis. Oh, no. I will say about the whole hot air balloon industry, <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a, uh, I don't know, man. I've never been one to say, hey, I'd like to go up on a balloon with a uh, blazing fire underneath me. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there's about seven ways that could, you, you could end up perishing. <laughs> there's only one way you could survive. <laughs> The only people who have ever pitched it historically were Fortune uh, or Forbes magazine, Malcolm Forbes and Jules Verne. They're the only people who ever made hay off the hot air balloon. Right. Everybody else, you're right, has ended up on Mysterious Island. Don't you think Malcolm Forbes is like, hey, man, maybe if I grow up on this hot air balloon all the time, people will think of me as a hot air balloon guy and not a secret fruit. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody has, everybody has their motives. I think you might have laser locked on those. So you're not sending your boy up in a... You're not sending your own son up in the hot air balloon, Norm. No way, man. No, my son's just into regular boyhood things, bungee jumping. Right. Uh, Indelible I, paintball. Yeah, he he likes to cut himself because he says it makes him feel something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no. what's wrong with feeling nothing like everybody else? <laughs> what about these uh, Olympics? Uh, no, I love uh, I love the Winter Olympics. Tell me why? Why? Because well, because you get all the great sports together. You know, you get hockey, and then all those other things. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, you know, speaking of sports guys, uh, and I know you follow the sports. What about this Tiger Woods? The whole scenario. I haven't talked to you since that happened. Well, I don't. I, the only thing that surprises me about it is that that people were surprised. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're like, "Hey, wait a second! You tell me that uh, are we talking about the same guy? <laughs> <laughs> the, the super charismatic?" Billionaire? You tell me that guy likes to lie down with the ladies? I don't believe it. <laughs> so it's my brother-in-law, Mort. That'd be a different story. <laughs> but I, I, I had no idea there was this bathroom uh, thing going on that was so, uh, <laughs> you know, it wasn't just a, a, a small thing because they had a sting operation, they had a code, you know, in the Minneapolis airport. The bathroom was apparently famous. It's the Tigris and Euphrates of the code tapping. <laughs> exactly. So for you or me, we would just be a hopeful. I, mean, I can't speak for you, but for me and you, would just be a place we quickly run in. You know, <laughs> these guys, they get You know, they're going. Have you been to the Minneapolis airport bathroom? <laughs> Place is the hottest joint in town. <laughs> talk about your talk about your mind blowing sex. <laughs> There's like a velvet rope like outside Studio Fifty Four. <laughs> That'd be great. With an old black gentleman allowing you in. <laughs> Are you on the list? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Halston. <laughs> You know, my feeling, Norm, is they ought to put in, uh, like, Grauman's Chinese Theater, put how wide Craig's footprints were in soft <laughs> cement in there so people can come in for photo ops and uh, see that's, how that's I, I, perfect. absolutely. Yeah. That's I think they should put the a list of what the code is because I don't know codes, you know, and I, I don't want to do the code by mistake because a lot of times I'll be listening to my iPod, you know, so I don't have to talk to people. I, I think that's kind of touristy if you put the code. I put in. my Bose off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing about the code is if you don't know it you and you miss... It. What if I was tapping my toes to listening to my, uh, yes. my uh, Billy iPod. Joe Shaver CD? Right. And my toe tapped against an old dude's or a dude's uh -huh. police officer. And uh, then he... Uh, knocked on the thing and i took off my bows i go what he goes what time is it he goes seven o'clock you know i go what he goes what time is it i go seven o'clock i look at my watch he goes are you sure i go absolutely next thing he's clamoring under or something <laughs> i go no no I... <laughs> the anonymous thing to me has always been because i find it like it would take me probably a year before i was comfortable enough with a person you know right. <laughs> show them my back of my hair and a hair on my back but uh, <laughs> the anonymous part like here's a guy he's never met a guy ever you know in his whole life and he's in an airport and he's like yeah, come on in sir we don't have much time uh, <laughs> you know i hope you like the place i was just 
defecating in it. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Anyways, I got an 840 to Chicago. I don't have much time. <laughs> Just robe and uh, get to this filthy thing. I'm going to grab a slice of Sabaro and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs>